Good morning everyone. Welcome to my channel. I'm Lynette and this is Charmed Grammy Crochet. Thanks for joining. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you're not subscribed, please hit that little red subscribe button. Um, it should probably, not the one in the video, but the one under the video will turn gray if you're subscribed. Um, the one on the video I don't think turns any colors. Um, so if you've already subscribed, thank you so much. If you haven't subscribed, just please do so. Um, it doesn't cost you anything. Hit that little bell and you'll get notified every time I uh, upload another video. Today is the uh, reader, child's reader. I have not done yet a tutorial on the adult reader that I made. But the child's reader, as I was creating the second one, I filmed. Now, I'm going to tell you, worst tutorial video ever. So, I'm going to put this, this is going to be in front of the video, and I'm going to tell you how to make it. Uh, I don't have it written down, but it's very easy, um, which is why I could do it. So... You watch the video, um, it might give you some tips, pointers, things along the way, what I figured out as I was going along, um, but just know it was my first try ever for a tutorial, and it didn't turn out quite as good as I had hoped. But I'm going to put it together for you, and it's going to be included at the end of this. The child's reader is all one stitch. On the adult reader, I made fancy on the pockets and the back panel. On the child's reader, it's not that way. Uh, so, the child's reader is 60 inches long. You can adjust it to any size you want, smaller or larger. Uh, my adult reader is 80 inches long. So, Either way, I made them with different size hooks and different size yarns. So either way, I do believe they're both like 120 rows of half double crochet. Um, on the And it's kind of made in parts. The adult reader has a back panel, has two pockets, and it has like the scarf section. The child's reader is made with one, no back panel. The back panel is attached as you crochet so it's not a separate piece it's all one piece um, and then you can add a border and then the pockets which were very simple as well now I don't have any of the children's readers with me because I give them to my grandkids and they have them but I do have my reader so I can show you as I tell you what's to, what's going on so on the child's reader I crocheted a chain of 25 I used in, in the first part of the, the actual tutorial of it um, tells you what I used uh, I used a flicka yarn the flicka um, and I don't remember the crochet hook but it tells you um, probably the one that corresponds with the flicka and then for the pockets I used uh, because it was a corresponding color and it was still cotton I used um, premieres kitchen cotton for the pockets and the trim and I did add a sparkle yarn uh, that's enchanted from Premier as well so um, but that's included at the front of the video uh, on the adult reader I used a bigger hook and thicker yarn so it made it you know a bigger by a lot um, so on the child's reader you crochet a chain of 25 it's all half double crochet from there. Um, I did actually use one as a turn chain um, on a half double crochet. I, I think that's what Crystal uses. I ended up really liking that. So that's what I did through the whole thing. So chain 25 or actually chain 26 because of the turn, you know, the one turn. And then half double crochet all the way for 50 rows. Um, on the 51st row, and I don't, I, I couldn't tell you what the actual inches are, but for me it was the 51st row. Um, I did my 25 half double crochets, then I chained an additional 15. So now that row is going to be, the 51st row is, or plus one, 15 plus one for the turn. 
Um, and then I came back and did now 40 half double crochets. And I did that for an additional 22 rows. I thought it was going to be 20 rows, but at 20 rows it didn't look big enough. Um, I liked the look of it better at 22 rows. So I did 22 rows of 40 half double crochets. On the 23rd row, which would be now coming back, um, and that's providing I counted the rows correctly, but that's you know pretty pretty close to what it should be. So on the 20 on, on the now 20, well actually all in all it would be the 73rd row total. So 50 of 25 half double crochets, then 22 rows of 40 double crochets. Um, so on that, which would be 23rd or <laughs> actually 73rd row. Um, I stopped at 25 double crochets, making my back panel complete. And then I 25, 25 double crochets, or half double crochets, for another 50 rows, um, making then the other side to come down. So you have like a basic scarf and a back panel, but on the child's one, child size one, I just made the back panel as part of the reg reg original scarf. So if you don't understand what I'm talking about, on my scarf, oh that's backwards, uh, on my scarf, this back panel is a separate piece and sewed in. So, you know, whip stitched together. Um, because I started with the circle, made a square, and then into a rectangle. On the child's one, there is no circle, square, rectangle. It's all just a big rectangle, so I made it one piece. On the original knitted uh, knitted reader scarf that I was given as a gift, the back panel was also separate, um, but it was stitched in a different, like a... a like a ribbed stitch across the back where the whole sides were flat like this. Uh, and I don't know knitting, so I don't know the stitches, but the whole this part was a different stitch than what they did on the back panel. Um, and so I didn't even think about it until I was doing my second child shawl that the back panel could be, if you're doing the same stitch, just make it longer. So that's what I did. So when I got to, um, to like here, you know, I've got the 25, 25, and then I get to here. I just continued on with the chain and then went back and forth for 22 rows of now 40 stitches. Uh, I hope that makes sense. The pockets, um, I chained, I believe, 15. It does say in the video when you get there. Uh, and they're half double crochet. And I made them out of the other color yarn just so they would stand out. Uh, and I added the sparkle because my grandkids like that. So then I did two colors, you know, the um, coordinating color to the Flicka yarn and the sparkle yarn. And they are, I believe, 10 rows high, did chain 15 and then a half double crochet, chain 15 plus one, uh, then the half double crochets. Uh, and I believe they are 10 rows. And I put them on sideways because um, I wanted, I thought, <laughs> which really didn't make any sense, but at the time it made sense to me. I wanted the sides to have the fancy stitch, not the bottom, because you know the have a nicer stitch going on the sides. Because I figured the bottom you're going to whip stitch it together and you're not going to see anyway. Um, then when I put the pockets on, I used stitch markers to hold it in place. I just measured up you know, whatever you feel comfortable with. I think on mine, I went up like the size of my hand, which was like four or five rows. On the children's, a um, couple rows from the bottom, wherever you think would be comfortable for a kid's hand, you know, based on the size that you make the shawl. Uh, then I just stitched it together. If you wanted to put a border, you could. I did not. I was pressed for time. But I did put then the the kitchen cotton color border around the back panel um, just to make it stand out a little bit and coordinate the the pockets to the back panel a little bit more on that. I just did a single crochet all the way around just the back panel. Um, it would look cute if I had done it all the way around the whole thing and I could have done that and um, but as I said I was pressed for time because I wanted to give it to them while we were on vacation. Then I made the fringe um, 
and I just used the cotton, you know, the Flicka on theirs. I don't believe, I might have put in the kitchen cotton too. I, I really don't remember right now. You have to look at the picture. Um, you know, so just make it whatever size you you feel like. On my big one, I remember it's like uh, 10 inches long. It hangs 10 inches long. So it's probably five or six on my on the grandkids ones on the small ones um so that and i and i put i think five or six you know fringe it's just whatever the shot is it, it the pattern is um so adjustable to any size that you want now i'm five Two and a half. Sorry, I used to be taller. Uh, shrinkage has happened. Um, and my shawl at 80 inches is really kind of long for me. I'm okay with that because when I sit down, if I have it on and I sit down, it will, the, the scarf part will actually cover my legs like a lap blanket. And I totally love that about it. If I'm going to make another one for myself, I'm going to make it shorter. Uh, just for everyday use because when I'm not sitting wearing it, it gets in my way. Um, but I love it the size that it is, even though it's extra long, because like I said, when I am crocheting in the evening uh, in that cold air from my, uh, I sit right next to the vent where the cold air comes out and I freeze to death. And I put my reader shawl on and it covers and, and then it cut uh, my shoulders and it covers my legs and it keeps my arms free and it's perfect for me. Uh, so I think that should get you through making a children's reader shawl. Um, again, it's all about what size you want to make it. Um, you know, measure your grandkid or your child or yourself, you know, take a tape measure and say, oh, I want it to hang this long and make it to that size. Um, and I would like it to be this wide or not that wide because the pattern is, it's a one row repeat. So it, of a simple stitch. Um, so if I could do it without a pattern, anybody that can crochet at all can make this pattern. Uh, and you can make the child's just for yourself even you know what I mean you don't have to make the reader and put the circle pocket on it um, I did that because I wanted to be creative with it uh, the next one that I do which I I will hopefully try to do a tutorial that's actually decent <laughs> on the adult reader shawl with the pockets the way these are on mine um, and put that out there we'll see how it goes I, when I played back what I have that's at the end of this video, the actual tutorial, I'm like, oh my God. I, this is like even embarrassing to put up there, but I'll put it up there and I'll, you know, it, this is a learning, my, my whole purpose of this was to share yarny things and my learning experiences. So this was quite a huge learning experience for me at all, uh, you know, completely. Um, make something without a YouTube tutorial, something that uh, you know, it's kind of parts of it are completely 100% from my own brain and then get a pattern actually made for it and, um, you know, create something on my own with the help of all of my YouTube family was way out of my comfort zone and something I never thought would actually happen. So thank you for everyone that helped me with your knowledge. Uh, I hope anyone that has not requested the Sean wants it, please feel free to email me. The link will be below or the, uh, you know, charm, Grammy crochet at gmail.com. Um, and I'll be glad to send it to you. It is P it's a word document. I don't even know if that's PDF. It's word document. Um, but you, it's free. You can have it. Uh, and, and anyone that has crocheted, uh, you know, I would say I'm beginner to intermediate and I made the pattern so it can't be too hard. Um, and without making it like I made it, you know, with the circle pattern, anybody could make it. So enjoy. Um, 
you, you know, you can look at the tutorial or not, whatever you feel you want to do. It's not hard. Um, again, learning experience, just keep that in mind. <laughs> and have a great crafty crochet day. Happy hooking! Hi everyone, it's Lynette with Charmed Grammy Crochet and today we're going to work on the tutorial for the child size reader. Um, this is my first attempt at this so let's see how well it works. I know it's not ideal but I think maybe you can see my hands so I don't, I don't know. let's see how this turns out. So for this reader, for the child size Shaw, I am using two skeins of Flicka in the blue. Um, this is yarn I got from the Lion Brand or from the Hobby Lobby Yarn Haul. Um, so anyway, I'm going to use two skeins of this uh, Flicka, which is a 50/50 cotton, uh, 50 cotton, 50 cotton, 50 polyester. Uh, it is a number three yarn, um, but it's pretty much the same size as this number four yarn. So um, this will be the main shawl, the back, and the back. Um, so the scarf part and the back part. We will be making this in, I'm going to hope, two, well, three parts because there will be the back and the shawl, the scarf. I'm hoping to do as one. I didn't on my others, um, but this is going to be all in one stitch. I'm not making anything really fancy on the back, except for I'm going to add a little decoration in the lighter blue, or the solid blue. Uh, and this is just Premier Home Cotton. And I'm going to make the pockets out of the blue. And the um, this is enhanced. This is also a Premier yarn. You don't need to use this. I just want to add a little sparkle because my granddaughters like sparkle. I am using a number seven millimeter hook, um, which here, I never noticed that before, but here on the end, it does say US 10.75, but I always thought US came in letter sizes. There is no letter on here, so I don't know what size that means in U.S. terms. Um, not all of the hooks that I have have letter sizes on them, so I always go by the millimeter size because that's on every one of my hooks. Um, we will also need, well, I'm going to use some stitch markers so I can count my rows easier. Um, we'll need a... Uh, you know, darning needle to sew in your ends, and you'll need some scissors. Uh, that's all we'll need to get started. So, let's get started. Um, let me just get this yarn started, and I'll get right back with you. Okay, here we go. Now, I did make one of these already in pink um, and purple yarn. For the one granddaughter and they they can argue or I don't care who gets which one uh, now that one I measured and I, I counted stitches but I never counted rows and I made the back panel separate this time I want to see if I can't make the back panel as one piece so we're gonna kind of work on this as we go so I'm gonna have to count the rows as I go because I'm really bad at counting counting rows I'm going to make this an all double, a half double crochet um, because I really like that stitch and I like it for this. So we're going to start with a slip knot on our hook, which I have done, and we're going to, um, oh goodness, what did I write here? Chain, for the, let's see, for the scarf part, we are going to chain 25 plus one. So that was the, so you yarn over, pull through, pull up a loop. That's one, yarn over, pull through the loop, pull, that's two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, and twenty-five. So that will bring us our foundation chain. Um, when I do a half double crochet, I only chain up one. And then we're going to turn our work. Oops. And I like to work in the back hump. So most of the time, I know when you're working in a chain, um, you, you work on the V side, which would be this side. I like I prefer working in the back hump. I think it'll give me a nicer edge when I'm done and I need all the help I can get. So we're going to go into the back hump, which if and we're gonna go right into the first stitch because we chained one, so now we're just gonna go right in here. Oh, forgot to yarn over. Duh. Gonna yarn over, go into the first stitch, got three loops on your hook. Going to yarn over, pull through one, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three. One loop on your hook, yarn over, go into, it's, you know, it's a little like crazy if you don't know what you're doing um, when you're new or even, I, I still, uh, you know, have a hard time um, when there's no fabric to hold on to, it gets a little kind of crazy. So you yarn over, you put through the back next hump, yarn over, pull through, just the one, three on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three. Do the next one, yarn over through that little back lump right there. Can you see that very well? Um, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through all three. And we're going to do that all the way down to the very end, at the end of the row, you will have 25 um, stitches on your hook. You will chain one and turn your work and start over. And we're going to do this same process uh, uh, all the way until we reach the, well, the overall length of this. See, this is why I need to count rows because I'm not really quite sure. Um, I measured until I wanted the whole thing to be 60 inches, so I just did it 60 inches, uh, and I didn't count the rows. Then when I added the back on the previous one, which I did separately, um, I, you know, sewed the back on. So this time, I want to, um, when I get up high enough, I'll just let me get some more yarn here. When I get up high enough, then I'm going to, I think, try to continue um, and add the back without having to sew it later. I think I just want to try to make it wider there. Um, maybe it won't work. I don't know. We'll see. Then we'll both know, or we'll all know. So I'm going to pause the video while I get to the end because I don't know really how to do all that fast forward stuff and when I get to the end we will turn our work so hold on okay so now I have done the last stitch so I'm just going to chain one which would be yarn over pull up a loop and I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to go directly uh, yarn over go directly into the next into the first stitch uh, yarn over pull up a loop yarn over and pull through all three and I'm going to continue this until um, you know the same half double crochet stitch the total length is going to be 60 inches um, for my granddaughters I think that's a good height the back panel is 10 inches, so half of 60 would be 30, half of 10 would be 5. 
so at 25 inches. So with my yarn and my 7 inch hook, I don't know how many rows that is, that's why I'm going to count them, and I will let you know when I get there how many that is. Um, but I'll be keeping an eye on it, You and since I'm making this and you're not making this, through the magic of YouTube and videos, I will have my 25 inches in a second and you'll still be working on row two. So just continue on and I will be back. Just same thing all the way, all the way, all the way. And I will be back with you um, at 25 inches and I'll let you know how many rows that is and then what the plan is. Okay, bye. Okay, so I'm at the back of this and I am going to apologize that uh, chain one does not count as a stitch when you're counting, but I do go into it at the end. So I have 24 stitches on my hook, not counting this little chain one right here, which is this chain one right here. But this will make my 25th stitch. So I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to go into that little V, which I forgot to mention when I was up there earlier. Um, go into that little V, I'm going to yarn over, have three loops on my hook, yarn over, pull up one loop. Chain one, that doesn't count as a stitch when I'm counting my stitches, but I am going to stitch into that later. And now we're going to yarn over and go into that first stitch, and for those, if you're new at this, newer than me, uh, and you don't know, you're going into that first V, where it makes the V's across here, and you want to grab both of those um, pieces of yarn to both sides of the V yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through all three I find that um, whenever I'm crocheting if I can just chain that one then I'm not getting that gap that you might somehow see and maybe that's totally wrong uh, for people that you know have been crocheting for a hundred years they're like oh my god what are you doing that uh, kind of idea always works for me, so whenever I can, I try to um, do it that way. I know you can, you know, like what, chain two on a half double crochet, and it counts as a half double, you know, counts as a stitch. Um, for this pattern, I'm not doing it that way. I mean, you can do it that way, and you're. And what's really nice about this pattern is you can make it as long as you or wide as you want to um, oh excuse me um, so you know if you want it to be fatter you know width wise shorter longer skinnier because your kid is smaller um, you know that's fine you can do whatever you want to do because it's just a half double crochet as long as you make the same number of stitches going all the way across, uh, you know, it really doesn't matter. It's very flexible. Um, it's a one size fits all, just depending on how wide or long you want it, wide and long you want it to be. So that makes it really simple. Once you get the hang, if you don't already know, have a hang of a half double crochet, I love this stitch because it's really easy. It's pretty brainless. Um, you can watch TV and do this stitch very simply. You don't have to think about it, and I like how it works up because you don't got a you don't it doesn't leave a lot of holes. Um, if you want something solid like and it's um I like it better than a double crochet for this type of of work it's double crochet I think will have a better different kind of drape so again now you know you don't want to forget and go, not go into the end stitch um, I'm gonna split my yarn now I can't see where it goes oh there it is I did notice that the split it's like the comfy cotton because it's all lion brand and I think I discussed that on the yarn haul that I thought this was the comfy cotton, and I'm telling you it is. Um, so uh, I do get it, it does split on me uh, occasionally. 
so anyway, continue, continue, continue. 25 stitches each row. I'll let you know how many rows. Okay, so I have reached 25 inches, which is 50 rows. Uh, so the rows are approximately half an inch. Um, so I finished the 50th row and I'm going to chain 15, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And then we're going to do one more chain to turn with, turn our work, and again, let's see now, this is going to be the um, bottom, you know, the back of the reader, so the back panel. Now normally, I would want to chain, I would want to um, work in the back loop, but then that's going to turn this, so I don't think I should do that, um, because if it was attached to this, then you would be working in the front loop, so I'm going to, see, <laughs> uh, oops, forgot to yarn over, go in the front loop, and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three to do the half double crochets. Um, so then we're just going to half double crochet through the front loops. I'm going to put a border around the back panel anyway like I did um, on the other one. Goodness, I'm twisting my oh, twisted. Okay. How did I get a back loop? See that? I twisted somehow. Just a little, but we'll fix it. Come on. <laughs> I can't get it in there. I think that's one of the reasons I like working in the back loop. You only have to get it through one strand. There we go. And as you can see, I have a little bit of trouble with that. Oh, dang it. I think I lost my loop. But all right. There we go. There we go. So we're going to go all the way across then and then just continue um, working. So just continue then working all the way across your half double crochets and we're going to go up another um, so that the back is 10 inches. The back part is about 10 inches so I'm going to say that's going to be about 20 rows. Um, and it's just going to continue like you were doing before just through um, half double crochets all the way across. And when we get to the end, you'll just, you know, do the turn one and, or chain one and turn. And, oh gosh darn it. Um, I'll see at the end of this row, we'll, we'll go back and do the, and then we'll go all the way across. So let me just uh, catch up to the end. See you in a minute. Okay, so row 51 is going to look like this. So then I'm going to chain one. I'm going to turn my work for row 52. And just go all the way back across the same way into the first stitch. And just double crochet all the way across your original 25 plus your 15. So that should give you about 40 then, right? 40 stitches all the way across. 
and we're going to do that for 20 rows unless I tell you that that's like changed later um wish that I have to fix this video so that would suck so we're going to go about 40 rows I I use stitch markers to help me count the rows with this stitch because it's like smallish for me and I have a hard time counting so I put a stitch marker um every row and then on the fifth row I'm running up a chain so every fifth row which should really go this chain really belongs here because this was the 50th row so that's five rows up um, someone in a video said to do that if you have a hard time it was like a cheat. Uh, the stitch markers per row, you know, keep track. If you have to know, like, how many rows you're at. Um, and running the chain up, if you're counting a lot of rows and you don't have one of those little button thingies that count rows. Um, I think it was Creative Grandma had uh, running using a you know piece of yarn to keep a, a or maybe it was Jaden stitches I don't know or maybe I came up with it on my own but I don't think so <laughs> uh, anyway it was a good way like every five or ten they would put a stitch marker or you know so you would know how what row you're on you just count up you know how many times you put the piece of yarn through your work so because I need to know the stitch count for the video or the row count for the video um, that's how I'm keeping track of how many rows I've crocheted and therefore I can tell you how many rows otherwise you would have to do it by inches like I made the originals. You know, I just measured the original to know the size that I needed. So, then I just crocheted to that size. But that's generally not how I've seen people do videos. <laughs> I don't think patterns say crochet it until it's this big. Uh, you know, so many inches or centimeters. Oh, goodness. Those of you that are on the metric system I'm sure would have a hard time if I'm telling you to crochet so many inches so we're just gonna now go into the other half or the you know back panel on this making it all one I hope this is gonna work out okay um, so far that doesn't look too bad just go right across since it's all the same stitch no no sense in not doing it this way, right? Um, just kind of makes sense. We'll see if it works out. Um, so far, I think it'll be okay. Then, when I add the border on the pink and purple one, I just put the border around, you know, three sides of the back panel here. So, I think I will still do that. Um, but part of me is debating on the on the pink and purple one. Do I want to put the purple all the way around? Except I've added the fringe, so I don't know how I could do that. I guess I could still do that just around the fringe. I don't know. But the purple is just kitchen yarn, and it's going to be a blue color on this, and it's also just kitchen yarn. It's not uh, it's not the pretty soft stuff like the Splicka. Um, and since it does kind of go around your neck, I don't know that one row would really make that big of a difference, but, um, I was on a time frame. I wanted to have these done into my grandkids today <laughs> or before today. 
didn't happen. Oh well. So now we're at the end again and we're just going to chain one. We're going to try to anyway. And go for row 53. I'm cheating and not putting my little stitch markers in there. So now I have to count. So I'm going to say go 20 rows. Um, just back and forth and or it might be 19, it probably whatever is gonna 20 rows ish. We'll have to like really know when we get to the row that's gonna end us on this end, and then we can come back to only here. You know what I mean? So that might not be the 20th row, but maybe the 19th or the 21st, or maybe the 20th. We'll see. Um, I guess I could figure it out just this one will be that that'll be the it's easiest just to um, get there and find out where it's at but we wouldn't be able to end down here without you know cutting the yarn and big part of doing this was so you know adding this on it so you don't have to sew, you know, sew it together. And then the other reason would be um, you know, make it easier, no seam. So, all right, I will see you at the end of approximately 20 rows. I'm going to say 20 at this point. Um, again, if it changes um, I'll put a note you know on the video um, because I know if I was watching a video and they said do 20 rows and then they came back <laughs> they went they did their 20 rows and they come back and they say oops no and I have to pull I have to frog I would be a little bit like what the heck so um, but this is, you know, my channel is a learn as we go channel. That's the whole point of what I wanted to do when I started my YouTube channel. So we're finally starting to learn as we go. Okay, I will see you at the end of 20 rows. Okay, so I'm back. And as you can see, I am not at home. Um, we are away. But I want to get this done. So, we're going to make do. So, as you can see, I did the back, oops, it's falling, all right. I did the back panel. Um, oh, and I put the, don't mind the noise in the background. Um, and I did put the pocket, one pocket on. I, I jumped ahead. Um, but I still have another pocket to do, so. Anyway, I got, I did 22 rows. Um, and to be honest, I'm not sure if it's deep enough. I think I'm going to add the blue and some of, maybe some of this, but definitely blue and um, make a bigger border than what I would had originally planned just to make it longer, but in the teal. And I'm kind of disappointed the teal like matches this color in, in here. And I thought it would look so much nicer than what it actually looks like on here. It, doesn't bring out the teal of like this strand right here that I thought it would bring out but they are like the same doggone color so I'm a little disappointed in that but I think my granddaughter will still like it very much because this is her favorite color so back to here so we did um, the original 25 and then an additional 15 so 40 for 22 rows up. Um, I stopped, I had the 20 and it just wasn't wide enough. So I went to 22 rows and I did turn because um, it was just easier for me to know where to pick up. So this is now going to count as row one and we're going to continue. Let's see, if you put a little stitch marker in there, you never drop your stitches. Uh, 
So we're just going to continue and go 25 stitches of half double crochets and then turn our work just like we were doing and we're just going to leave the last 15. So that is my um, that is that is my goal right now is just to make it to 25. And then like I said once ah, once I get my 25 across turn the work then I'm just going to continue can, I hope this is in yeah um, to do 25 double uh, half double crochets for another 50 rows or what however long you made your first, I mean 30 rows, what did it, nope, <laughs> sorry, 25 rows, right, isn't that what we did, 25 rows, um, oh, that's a lot more, 25 rows, 50 rows, I was right, right, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, yeah, 50 rows, duh, so we're going to go 50 rows, so that it's even on both ends and I did not count these so I am just gonna kind of eyeball it until I get close. So I'm gonna put you on hold till I get to the to the 25th one. Hold on. So then we got our 25 so we should match up to this side. And I'm just going to chain one, turn my work, go uh, yarn over, go immediately into that first stitch, and continue on with my half doubles. And go all the way down. I'm going to stop doing this right here because, I mean, you guys don't need to watch me half double crochet down the row. Uh, so then we're going to just put this in here for now. I'm going to put this aside. Now I did attach this pocket um, when I got to my 22 rows here uh, and we were driving I'm in the car and I made the first pocket and I did attach it. Um, now the pockets, I, I attached them sideways because uh, I wanted the nice edges on the side, not on the top and bottom. I don't know if that was a good idea. I did it that way on the other one too. Um, maybe I should have put the nice edge on the top, you know, maybe I should have done a border. Probably I should have just done a border all the way around it. That would have been a good idea. But now I'm doing this in that, uh, this is Premier Home, um, and this is a Premier, uh, I think it's enhanced. I lost the ball band in the car. It broke and it's probably still in the car. <laughs> so you're going to start with a slip knot. just going to chain loosely. Let me, can't stress that enough if you're using this extra yarn because it tended to want to give me an issue. Two, three, four, five, six. We're going to go to 15. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, Let's see, there we go. 13, 14, 15. And then again, I'm going to go into the back loop. Um, or 
right here. Oh, that's why you gotta be loose about it. So you go into the back loop and you're just going to half double crochet all the way across. Back loop only. Um, pick up that second thread if you're using something like that. And I'm just going to do this until back and forth the same way until I have 10 rows. Then you can attach your pocket. Um, once you have this part done. So I'm just going to get that started so you can see it because because I can do it now. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I will get back to you when I have it all completed except for um, the border around the back and uh, the fringe. All right, happy hooking. Be back in a bit. So now that we've completed all of our rows and they're even on both sides, let's just put the border around here. So I'm going to, oh, let me come under here. I'm going to start with a slip knot using my, you know, decorative color. I've weaved in all my ends everywhere around and space here. So we're going to practice this together. Never did this before. Quite like this. I think I want to start here in the corner. And I am just going to do a slip stitch. No, I'm going to do a single crochet. Can we see? Oh, let's get in here. So yeah, I'm just going to, I should probably just slip stitch it together right there in the corner. Let's do that. So we're going to insert our hook, pull up a loop and pull it through. And then tighten it up a little. Come and get in there. Now I'm just going to do a, let's just go with a half double. Let's just stick with it all the way around. Um, yeah, sure if I can get it to go through. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. What's the problem here? There we go. Too tight. Pulled it too tight. So we're just going to half double crochet. Same stitch we've been doing the whole time. All the way around for a border to match our pocket. Let me get some more yarn here. So I made this one is a little bit bigger than the purple one, purple and pink one that I made for my smaller granddaughter. Um, I made it a little bit wider. The original one, I think I went 21 or 22 stitches across the scarf part where I did 25 on this one. Um, and I did that. I made this one, I thought it would be easier for the tutorial. and. The, this one is for the older child, bigger, taller. She's not bigger, but she is taller. <laughs> she is older. So now when we get to the corner, we're just going to kind of, you know, what they say, fake it till you make it. We're just going to probably go two double crochet, or two half doubles in the corner. Um, and then just kind of work your way around with half doubles to make it is... Uh, you know what, let's go with, could do the chain two thing like on a granny, but I think we'll just go three, one for each side and one in the middle, and then it's more solid. So let's do that. Um, yeah, that's how we'll do the corners, is just three in there. So then you just gotta, because this side is your rough side, so you just kind of have to, you know, space them out evenly. I don't know if there's a really good trick to this. Somebody needs to let me know, but um, because I sure don't know what it is. Just kind of go around. Oh, 
that's too big. I'm not even going to give you a stitch count on this because um, just kind of, you got to go where it fits, where it makes sense, or it's going to make it look halfway decent. So we're going to do this all the way. And I did not put the sparkle yarn in with this on the border because this is a, I'm doing this in the summer. This is a summer um, weight yarn, you know, being that it's cotton. So if they like throw this on, if they've been swimming all day and then they want to throw this on to keep their shoulders warm as it gets chilly or, you know, when they get out of the water and they just want to kind of keep their shoulders warm a little bit. Um, they can, they can snuggle up in it a little bit. Uh, I was afraid that that, you know, glittery stuff would be a little scratchy on their skin. You know, if they're just coming out of the pool or off the beach or whatever. Uh, not that there's beaches in Ohio so much, but. Um, For those that might be doing this that aren't in Ohio, uh, you know, you don't have to add the glitter, period. But I, I thought, you know, I was afraid of that being a little scratchy on them, which is also why I did not put it in on the fringe. Because I think it would be adorable, more glitter the better as far as I'm concerned. Um, I think it would be adorable in the back panel, and I think it would be adorable in the fringe um, for the for my little little ones. They they like all the glitter as well. Um, but if it's scratchy on them, I know they won't wear it. Can't say as I blame them. I wouldn't want to wear it if it was scratchy on me either. So again, we're going to get to this corner. You know, I think this tripod thing this way is kind of working out with my cell phone. It's not the, like, truly professional thing to do, but it's not so bad. So just in this corner area, we're going to go like three around. However, it configures to work out to look decent. I got one kind of before, one kind of after. We'll put two here. Because I don't want it to. And. Again, not another nice. Another not nice edge. Because I did not go. This would be like the edge that I started with. But I couldn't go in the back loop. Only because it would have had a switch my yarn would have had it been twisted and I wasn't going to twist the yarn so I could do the back loop on the original chain for this. So this is now what we have to deal with, I guess. Again, we're just going to continue this on down the road. I'm going to have the little, I'm, I'm going to consider this done once I do this and then uh, and as soon as I get through with this we're going to put the pocket on and my granddaughter wants to help me with the fringe but we'll start it without her. Then I'll show you the finished product. I might add a couple of additional rows if I do onto the length here for her. Um, I'll do two rows, I think, of the blue, and then I'll do uh, two rows of this, and then maybe go back to the blue, and then add another border if it needs to be bigger. Uh, 
she's tall and thin, so it's kind of, but she's little. She's like, you know, but she's for, uh, tall, skinny. She looks like a ballerina kind of body. And so, you know, the nice thing about this pattern is it's very adjustable. You make it to whatever size you need for whatever size child or adult actually that you're doing, that you're making it for. So now I'm back here at the end. So I'm just going to do a little slip knot down here. I think to finish that edge. And I, um, did I slip knot? No, <laughs> I did not do a slip knot. Um, I'm not going to do this border all the way around because this is like the kitchen cotton and I don't want to have that part be necessarily up by anybody's face. Not that it's, you know, a bad yarn or anything. It's just, um, the whole idea was to accent and I'm really disappointed that it, that this blue did not bring out as much of the blue as I thought it would of the teal in the pattern. So we're just going to cut that. Then we'll weave in the ends and I'll do that. And the back is going to be done. Now for the pocket. Now I already did the one. I showed you that earlier. Because um, I was trying to do it while we were driving. So this is five inches up. So that's what I'm going to do this. And then I just kind of uh, we'll measure up five inches. I don't know if this is technically the way to do this or not, but I'm going to, and then put it on a row. So there's like a seam right here, like the middle of a row right there at the five inch mark. So, I don't know. Oh, try again. We're going to go with this row. So what I did is I'm going to do that row. And I don't know if this is the tech. Oh, can you guys, am I not even in? Okay, five inches up, and this is going to be my base row. So I'm going to fold it in half. I'll probably remeasure because you know what they say. I'm going to sew it on with this yarn. And again, I'm not going to put the sparkle in there because honestly, it just gets stuck. And I found kind of cheated. I said, oh, let's go around it this way and then go three times. <laughs> and so that gave me an idea how much yarn because uh, I'm kind of new at this and I always think I'm grabbing way too much yarn and then it's never enough. So I did the, when I did the other pocket, I did three times around and guess what? That worked out for me. So Three times plus a little tiny. So cross your fingers that my uh, yarnage amount here is decent. So now I'm going to turn this sideways. I know it looks like it should go this way, but like I said before, I wanted the finished edges on the sides because this one's already going to be sewn down so it's not going to look the same anyway and what I should have done and I didn't think about it before but like I said this is all a learning process for me um, so we'll learn as we go and what I should have done is just crocheted a border maybe around the top but since I didn't on the one that I've already sewn on and my granddaughter is anxious for this because she knows about it now um, I'm not going to undo that so we're back to this one. This is the middle. This is the middle here. We're sewing it to here. Put the middles together. So this is how I cheat. And I don't know if this is what anybody else does, but I found that this kind of is helpful to me. Tack on the middle with some stitch markers. And we'll put the middle of this one. I had different kinds of stitch markers, and I don't have any fancy stitch markers. 
Um, I just have what I have. I don't even know what kind of stitch markers they are. these are. They came with a package of needles that I bought one time. Hooks that I bought, I mean. Um, hold on, I have more. So I just kept this kind of in line with this. And I use these as pins. And then this signs the grandkids were playing in my stuff. <laughs> okay. And oops. Oh, I like the pin kind better than this swirly kind. So one there, no, clear. <laughs> clear ones are hard to find. And I'm gonna start with that sign. And then I am just gonna up and down stitch all the way around. And then we're going to add the fringe, which I cut at 12 inches and then fold in. So, uh, this is just going to get sewn this way, and, you know, I will need to go into, because this one is bigger, this is all I had left of two skeins of the Flicka. So, for the fringe, I'm going to have to go into a third skein. Um, and if I do any additional bordering or anything like that, it would have to be out of the third skein. I had on the pink one, um, I still have, I, you know, I still have a quantity. I'm really surprised because everything is pretty much the same. I just added like four, I think, stitches to the width all the way around. Um, and then the panel, back panel on this, I thought would actually save yarn because I made it all one. But maybe my tension wasn't as tight. I don't know. You know, it's yarn. Who knows? Um, so, I don't need to show you how to whip stitch this on here, you know, just, or whatever that stitch is called, where you just go up and down and up and down, like a sewing machine. Um, so I'm going to do, I'll call it a sewing machine stitch, to stitch the pocket on, and then I'm going to add the fringe, and then when I did the fringe, um, I had two of each, two, two 12 inch strands of each color, folded it in half, and I marked this, folded in half and stuck one in, stuck one in on each end, and then went into the middle. And then we're done. So when I come back, I'm going to go to the beginning of this with my granddaughters wearing them, and so you'll have already seen that by the time you get to this. So. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it's at least helpful. Um, and I'll be back at the beginning later. Have a good day. Thanks for watching.